Hello everyone. Welcome to Biomechanics class. Last class we discussed about the arthrokinematics, osteokinematics and some anatomy of the thoracic spine. So today we will discuss kinetics or osteokinetics. That is the compressive and distractive force acting on the vertebral spine, especially the thoracic vertebral spine. So during flexion, which part of the vertebral spine, thoracic vertebral spine is compressed and which part is getting elongated. Before knowing that, we already know due to the posterior concavity of the thoracic vertebral spine or kyphotic structure of the thoracic vertebral spine, there is already a compressive load over the vertebral bodies. And also the COG passes anterior to the vertebral spine creating more compressive load on the vertebral body of the thoracic vertebral spine. The load increases caudally that is 9% of the body weight is overcome by T1 whereas 40% of the body weight is causing compressive force at T12. 76% of the load is transferred through the body and disc complex that is out of 47% of the body weight at T12, 76% of that body weight is transferred through body and disc complex whereas remaining weight is transferred to the pillars of the vertebral spine that is epiphyseal joint pillars, lamina and pedicle. Now more flexion of the thoracic vertebra increases the compressive force entirely on the vertebral body and the disc whereas there will be distractive force on the posterior structures that is the facet joints facet joints will get uh, elongated it will separate from each other as well as the spinous process will move apart from each other but entirely there will be compressive force on the vertebral body and the disc So what are the forces that limit excess flexion? The flexion can be limited by the tension that is created in the posterior connective tissue which are mostly ligaments. So the first ligament and the important ligament which prevent excessive flexion is the posterior longitudinal ligament which we have already discussed for cervical vertebra. So these ligaments are similar to cervical vertebra. It is same. It prevents flexion of the vertebral spine. Here is the ligament which you can see the longitudinal ligament which is just posterior to the vertebral bodies. Next ligament that prevent flexion is the capsular ligament which covers the apophyseal joint. It prevents rotation, side flexion as well as the flexion of the vertebral spine. Next structure which prevents flexion is the well developed ligament that is the ligamentum flebum which is between the lamina of the superior vertebra and the inferior vertebra. So this prevents flexion as well as side flexion. Interspinous ligament which is present between the spinous process as we have discussed for cervical vertebra it prevents flexion supraspinous ligament which are running through the tip of the spinous process of the thoracic vertebras. So this ligaments prevent flexion. The bilateral intertransverse ligament which are present between the transverse process of the superior vertebra and the inferior vertebra. This ligament also prevents flexion. Now coming to compressive and distractive force during extension. So during extension, the compressive loading is on the posterior aspect of the vertebra that is the pillars and the spinous process of the vertebra whereas there will be distractive force anteriorly which will be separating the vertebral body from each other creating more space for the intervertebral disc to shift anteriorly. What are the forces that limit excessive extension? It is the anterior longitudinal ligament which is the only ligament that prevents 
excessive extension which is situ situated anterior to the vertebral body as well as the approximation of the spine of the vertebras will also prevent excessive extension. The forces that limit lateral flexions are the impact of zygofacial or facet joints, its capsular ligaments, limitations imposed by the rib cage itself. The forces that limit excessive rotation are the shearing force which is created over the sternum, impact of the facet joints, its capsular ligament, limitations imposed by the rib cage, ligamentum flavum, transverse ligament. Here the unique thing is which uh, limits excess rotation is the rib cage, the presence of rib cage which restrict movement of the thoracic spine. Due to the change in the orientation of the zygofacial joint or the facet joint at T11 and T12, the amount of axial rotation is decreased in the lower part of the thoracic spine because at the level of T11, T12, the orientation of the facet joint or the epiphyseal joint is approximately 90 degree to each other which prevents rotation. The trabecular systems which we have already discussed for cervical vertebra which will be remaining same for all the vertebral spine. It has three types of trabecular system or arrangements which is vertical, superior oblique and inferior oblique. So vertical trabecular system prevents the compressive force whereas superior and inferior oblique prevents the torsion and the shearing force. The liver system in the thoracic spine is same as cervical spine. It is the first class liver where the fulcrum is the articular facet joint. You can see number one here that is the fulcrum facet joint or the epiphyseal joint. The resistance is the vertebral body and the intervertebral disc where the axial load is born. That is the body weight which is acting downward. This is the load which will be overcome by the effort created by the posterior muscles of the vertebral spine which is mainly the erector spine and multifidus etc. So what are these muscles posteriorly which acts as an effort? The main muscles are the erector spinae muscle which is grouped into three groups that is longissimus group, iliocostalis group and spinalis group. You can see in the picture we have three longissimus, longissimus capitis, longissimus cervices and longissimus thoracis. So these muscles create extension as well as side flexion and rotation. If it is contracting unilaterally, it can create side flexion. If it is contracting bilaterally, it will create extension. Next group of muscle is iliocostalis. We have iliocostalis thoracis, iliocostalis lumborum and iliocostalis cervices. This also create extension and side flexion depending upon the bilateral contraction or the unilateral contraction. Spinalis muscle, spinalis cervices, spinalis capitis and spinalis thoracis. Spinalis thoracis will create extension at the thoracic spine. Next group of muscle is called as transversospinal muscle. It is deeper to the erector spinae. The first group of Transversal spinal muscle is the semispinalis, which is superficial, multifidus, which is intermediate, and rotators are the deep muscles. Semispinalis, we have three types that is, semispinalis cervices, capitis, and semispinalis thoracis. So, semispinalis thoracis is responsible for extension and side flexion. At the thoracic spine whereas semispinalis and capitis which we have discussed are the extensors of the cervical spine. Next group of muscle is the multifidus muscle. This is collection of the muscle fiber. It originates from the transverse process of the vertebra to the spinous process of the 
vertebra located 2 to 4 intervertebral junction above. The multifidus will also create extension and side flexion depending upon the bilateral contraction or the unilateral muscle group contraction. Rotators are responsible for creating extension and rotation along with side flexion. So each fiber attached between transverse process of one vertebra and lamina and base of the spinous process of the vertebra located one or two intervertebral junction above. So there are two types of rotators which are rotator longus and rotator brevis. Rotator brevis span one and the longus span two intervertebral junction while attaching to the base of the spinous process. So all these muscles act as an array of bilaterally matched guy wires specifically aligned to compress as well as control shearing force between the intervertebral junctions stabilizing the vertebral column. So this much from the thoracic spine biomechanics. You may refer this books Kinesiology of Musculoskeletal System by Donald A. Newman Kinesiology, the Mechanics and the Pathomechanics of Human Movement by Carol A. Otis and Joint Structure and Function by Cynthia Norkins. So this books you may refer for detailed knowledge and more understanding of this topic. Thank you.